Hey, what's the gamer? It's me, Heart the Gamer, and I know, like, this is a different image from usual, but basically, um, I didn't get to really technically finish the, the scene I wanted to at the end of the stream of Dungeon Dragons Superior, of like chapter 5? Yeah, I think it was chapter 5. I didn't get to do the uh, ending scene that I wanted to do, which featured Amethyst, who's on the left, and Sebastian, who is on the right. So you actually get to see what they look like uh, for the first time. I usually don't do this for NPCs, but I think this will be important. So this will be in the the entire video, like all this and stuff. So it's, I'm not gonna delete it or anything like that because it usually is a live stream, so it's just going with the flow. So basically. I'm gonna act like how it is like for a normal Dungeon Dragon scene, but in video form now. This will be on my Dungeon Dragons like superior playlist. So if you're watching this then at this point, then you should probably know. But okay, so doing the cutscene that was supposed to happen at the end of that chapter. Basically, uh, at the Gemstone Clinic, Amethyst is pharmacy um Spashin goes and visits her for the first time in a while she seems pretty shocked about the little visit but really glad to see her old friend and um so basically uh she goes back inside to her clinic and closes down for the night and then she sits and talks with Sebastian so Sebastian what is the point of visiting me at this hour as you know there was a monster attack yes I know the monster attack what about it uh, do you remember Mrs. Gorthol what about her? She was the monster. I see. Well, her vitals were normal the other day. Exactly. But it wasn't that. That's what I was worried about. <sighs> she had a book. And then he basically brings out, like, teleports the book to her to Amethyst and say like, Amethyst we have a big problem so you're not the only one giving books out that's not the only problem Amethyst these books when we took it away from her from the deal she made with someone don't know who but there's more people than just me giving these books out like crazy. Apparently. Apparently once we took the book, me and Catherine, once we took the book away from her in astral form, shockingly, she instantly become the, became the monster. So what you're telling me is, if someone took the book from the person, they, what, they turn into the monster. Of course, she said her, she signed a contract. Mine's a handshake, of course, as you know already. I guess I'm well aware, I made that same deal as you. Which, uh, by the way, I need that book back. Of course. Not like I was using it anyways. I am a pharmacist. I don't do magic. I do physical healing. I don't do medical healing. I know, but I did really want you to have it just in case it falls in the wrong hands, but...
supposedly princess lost that book we don't know where it is and I'm fearing for her right now because of everyone I feel a connection with her the kind of con connection she reminds me of me when I was younger <sighs> curious brave all that stuff I don't want her to turn like me sure I gave her a magic book and sure her eyes are turning colors like mine but I thought she could Control it better, which she was doing great actually. But if she becomes like Miss Gorth, Miss Gorthol, then I'm afraid I can't save her. As we learned before from that one attack, that one monster attack from the other day. Yes, that one, the one that where they defeated it twice. I learned from this book that she was the one who was the one possessing the monster the second time. The first time was something else. A deal is probably broken or something like that. The person probably lost the book and couldn't get it back in time. I think it was a contract and it wasn't a handshake. So I'm afraid with my handshake it might be lasting a bit longer but I don't know how much longer because with that contract it was instant the second we took the book and I told her to keep books safe <sighs> why did I give her the book that's probably what the person wants me to do is just give her the book that way she can learn magic and, you know, break the rules and possibly lose her spot. That's probably why I had the book on me in the first place. I thought if, because I had the book on me, it was special. I had to get someone special who would understand the position we're in. Someone who would be on the same level as us. Someone who was different from all the others. And I fucked up big time. I gave our princess a book of magic. And she lost it. Someone took it. And now because someone took it we made a deal for her to keep it safe and now she's not ha she doesn't have the book in her possession I'm fearing for her I want to keep her safe I really do <sighs> but I'm useless in this form can't really use most of my magic and whoever has my body is <laughs> somewhere within a hundred miles. I would go try to find my body, but I don't know. Every time I feel like I'm getting close to my body, I just feel weaker. And feel like I'm about to die. I feel like whoever has my body is purposely trying to keep me away from it. this they have a crazy plan going on where it might involve significant others they don't have the right people for this I mean Catherine might but 
we also want to make this plan work, we might have to, you know, they want to use those kind of situations. Their aunt and uncle, they only, in the royals, they only approve of the main three races, four races. Technically three, because they don't care for damp peers. So, Amethyst, you might have to help Kai in his situation. It's a lot to ask, but... I care for these people. All of them. As much as they hate me, and as much as they think I'm evil. Oh well. As long as I feel like I'm helping someone, I should be fine. I don't care if they make me the bad guy, the good guy, the antagonist, protagonist, anti-hero, you know. As long as I help them in the long run. So Amethyst, as one, uh, from one friend to another, can you please, please help the prince and princess with this little favor? You know this will cost me a lot, right, if I get figured out. Sure, I'm an ASMR, but it doesn't mean it will work fully. I know. I mean, let's hope they forgot about you. I mean, you are you are from Cyprus, so the only reason why you're here is because you were the best of your in your field. Yes. And I will try to do my best to do to help them in every way possible. Because you are my friend, Sebastian. And friends always help one another, no matter what the cost is. I'll go talk to them tomorrow for the plan. Thank you, Amethyst. I really do owe you one whenever I can get the chance. Sebastian, you owe me nothing. You are suffering more than any of us right now. So two, the two royals have lost their family. Sir, one person has amnesia. The other three are orphans. The one that, l the one police officer, has lost his wife because of the royals. The other two, well, their lifestyles have been in the slump for quite some time. You have it the worst because you had to use magic to even contact anyone. Not just that, you're a goblin. One of the lowest races of them all. Right, basically, right there with the shifters. Especially that, you know, you're about like six feet tall, for goodness sake. You're the rarest goblin ever. I know. That's probably why they have my body, because I'm unique. I use magic, I'm a goblin. I'm tall for a goblin. Well, as you can see with my astral projection, they haven't harmed me for reasons. I just really want to know where they keep my they're keeping my body, which I will help you in every way possible. But for now, I will help them. 
for you and also because of Ellis. He still needs to recharge his thing, so he needs to come back in a while. It's been almost two weeks. Apparently, the other day, he just went to go visit Susie. Which, by the way, how is Susie? I haven't talked to her in... Gosh, since she was a child. It's been so long. I know. I'm so sorry that... We couldn't take you with us from Cyprus. We even did to move up to Siberia. And then we found out that there are no king and queen for Cyprus. Exiled every other race from Cyprus to Cytaria. Remember, you're a hun about 100 miles away from your body. Sure, you can go a bit further than that because how strong you are. But. That just means your body is somewhere in Siberia. Hopefully, you will find me soon. Thank you, Amethyst. I will also be going with you guys to the palace to go see the aunt and uncle for myself because I just really want to see them. But, of course, I'm going to be in the astral planes, meaning nobody can see me unless I make let them see me. Or, if they're also in astral projection form, they can only see me. So... I guess you're going to help them tomorrow? I will do my best. No promises, though, that it will go well. But, yes, I'm going to help them. I'll pretend to be Clay's fiancé or something like that. And that's it. I'm not getting Susie involved, though. Well, duh, Susie's young. Why what the heck would I... Why, why the hell would I ever let Susie get involved in this? But to remind me, I need to go pick her up soon. So, thanks for coming to visit me, Sebastian. I do miss you so much. And I missed you too, Amethyst. And basically they both hug and she just leaves. As she leaves, Sebastian is left behind in the clinic all alone and he just basically go sits on the ground curling into a ball basically uh for the end bit you all you hear is sniffling and that's basically how the ending scene was supposed to go but i somehow lost internet or something i don't know what happened but yeah hopefully we can continue I guess technically later today. It's already like 1.53 a.m. the time I'm recording this. And plus I'm going to be uploading it basically right after I'm done recording it. So that way everyone will know. And you, the audience, will know too. So now you know that what was supposed to happen and more about Sebastian and Amethyst and their backstories. And where they actually came from. Amethyst and Sebastian are from Cyprus. Actually, same goes with Susie now, because I did say for Amethyst, uh, I wish we. So, yeah, I guess I am including Susie from Cyprus as well. So, Cyprus and. No, not Cyprus. So, Susie and Amethyst are both from Cyprus. Same with. Um, same with uh, Sebastian, but Sebastian was exiled, well, his race was exiled to Cytaria, which is the lowest rank of all three cities. But from uh, also what I also told you that I confirmed is that his body's actually in Cyperior. So yeah, now you know 
more about these two. And you know what they look like now. So whenever you hear me talk about talk as or talk about Amethyst or talk as or talk about Sebastian, these are the two characters. Remember, left is Amethyst and right is Sebastian. If you guys weren't keeping up on who was who. But I mean, it should be pretty obvious who is who. Because of the, you know, the gender differences and what matches with what. Plus, Goblin, like, come on, he is quite literally a goblin. I would show you a full body, but, um, I, it, I, I don't know if it would work, so. Maybe some time in the future. So, yeah, I'm gonna end it here. If you guys in, enjoyed this little recording ending bit of the Dungeon Dragon Superior Chapter 5, The Shadowy Truth ending scene, then please leave a like, please subscribe, hit, hit the notification bell to get notified when I go live up a video, and I hope to see you all in the future. Bye!